There are myriad neurological disorders that appear to be a result of a brain glucose hypometabolism, where the common denominator between things like uh, Alzheimer's disease, things like uh, epilepsy, uh, epileptic disorders, migraine headaches, and many, many more, despite all of the differences they have, the one thing they have in common is that they have all been shown to be a, at least partly affected by the brain not being able to get enough glucose very well, perhaps due to insulin resistance. But this is the earliest research. From the early 1900s, you can find physicians publishing medical reports documenting the total stopping, cessation of things like migraines or epilepsy. Uh, so pretty, pretty impactful, all just because the patients get into ketosis. So the brain clearly benefits with ketones and uses them very readily. In addition, Dr. Stephen Cunane, C-U-N-N-A-N-E, he has found that the ketones help reduce oxidative stress and inflammation in the brain, and that could be one of the mechanisms whereby ketones have a neuroprotective effect in conditions like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's. So the brain, the neurological system appears to thrive on ketones. Now, beyond the brain, we have improved physical performance and energy levels. It's been shown that ketones, I've even published some of this in my own lab, look up work by, um, with the first author being a last name Parker, Parker et al. From, and I'll be the Bickman, I'll be the senior author, the corresponding author on that. We published a report in muscle finding that muscle cells per unit oxygen consumed are capable of producing more ATP, the main energy molecule of the cell. So the cell appears to be more efficient with its use of ketones, at least muscle cells and neurons, in producing more energy. And at a, at a whole body level, this could be some of what we see, at least in rodent studies and a human study, finding that ketones can improve um, prolonged exercise. Now, more of my own work, but I'm not the only one who's shown this, but I published a really good report in 2020 from my lab, finding that ketones have a stimulating effect at fat tissue. Not only can ketones stimulate the brown adipose tissue, that's the adipose tissue that has a very high metabolic rate that typically only gets activated when you are shivering, like you're in an ice bath, but ketones can do that too. Similarly, ketones are capable of turning white fat, the very low metabolic rate, lethargic, miserly form of fat and making it behave a little more like brown fat, increasing its metabolic rate by almost three times. This was a human paper. We, we were conducting um, studies in humans, taking fat biopsies of human belly fat. And when people were not in ketosis compared to people that were in ketosis, the metabolic rate of that fat tissue was about three times higher. So pretty substantial, all because the ketones were elevated. That was the only difference. So this is a benefit. In this case, appreciate for just a moment some of the uh, paradox, if you will, where in muscle, the ketones are helping the muscle be more efficient with its energy. It's getting more ATP. So the muscle is being more miserly with its energy use. In contrast, adipose tissue appears to get a little more wasteful. It's less efficient. That's a, that's a very clever adaptation, very unique, and, and one that ends up being favorable to our metabolic situation in today's world where we have people with too much fat and they need to burn it. Ketones, not only are ketones a product of the fat burning, but they actually then are feeding back obviously to enable more fat burning.